Hi, George Bruno here with you, also known as the Sultan of Silver. I want to share with you today a couple tips and tricks for creating your own beard oil and experimenting with beard oil. One of the things that I do is when I first trim someone's beard, they sit in my chair, I always take a uh, YS Park comb and I see how far I can go into their beard without it stopping. I don't have it with me today, it's at the uh, salon. So I'll go like this and I will try to comb down and usually the guy that doesn't take care of his beard or the guy that doesn't use an oil of some type, some type of conditioning, uh, conditioning treatment or oil out of the shower or after the shower, the comb will stop right here. I can't, I'll end up yanking hair out. The guys who take care of their beards, literally, comb goes right through. One of the things I like to do to determine how soft my, uh, my beard is, I'm not manhandling this comb. I'm holding it with two fingers. See this? Just like this. So, and I'm holding it lightly. I want to see how much resistance it gives my comb. Two fingers, look at that. I can comb my beard easier than I can comb my hair. Now obviously gravity is pulling my hair down. I have the unique situation where my hair grows almost straight. My S curl is six to seven inches long. You can see it, there's the S right there. I mean, it takes that much length for me to get an S. There's guys who have S, 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 S or coil, 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 coil. Mine isn't like that. And I told you that when I, when I went gray, I lost uh, all my curls. So apparently, in my case, the pigment had something to do with the curl. But let me show you a couple things. Um, one of the girls at uh, Kiehl's brought this to me and said, try this and uh, put it in your beard and let us know what you think. I like it a lot. Kiehl's Nourishing Beard Oil. I like it a lot. I give it a, um, I give it a 8.5 on a scale of 1 to 10. But I saw that the uh, active ingredient, the main oil that makes it different than every other oil out there is Prakashi. So I bought some Prakashi oil. Can you see that? Prakashi oil. Four ounces. I bought it off eBay. And I check all these oils out. I love this kind of stuff. I have a bin with every oil you can imagine and I have a couple other interesting ones coming up. But when I when I do that, um, watch, I usually just put my finger over and just go like this. And when I feel it, it's very, very slick. Very slick. I like putting it on my hand first and then just seeing if it disappears to see if it soaks in. Now, pure Prakashi oil is actually a vegetable butter, like shea butter. Now, it's got a wild smell to it, uh, uh, like a nutty, like a nutty smell. It's not bad. It softens my skin, but it doesn't soak in as much as I would like it to, for instance. Let me see what happens. I guess that's good too if you have like any dry skin, if you want to use your beard oils for dry skin. I have a little patch of dry skin that, I don't know if it's dry because I scratch it or I scratch it because it's dry. It's been that way for 20 years. So rub that in and it coats. Now that, my hand should not be shiny. Can you see it? Can you see it reflecting the light? All right, that should not be happening if it's an ultra emollient. Ultra emollients will soak in within a minute and you can't feel them. This here has a little bit of a greasy, it's a thicker oil, and uh, I guess you could use it for grooming. The one day that I did use it, I, I try to use oils for about three days before I evaluate them, and I use them on a completely unplugged beard. So I want, I want to create a baseline where I apply all the beard oils to clean, right fresh out of the shower beard hair. And it might, my beard felt a little greasy, but it, and it did control it quite well. So Prakashi has a, a tendency to control some of the flyaway stuff. That's Prakashi oil, which is the active ingredient in Kiehl's. And then there's jojoba oil that I really love. I get this every year at the New York Hair Show. I'm going to put a couple drops here. Now, very light. Very light, put it on my hand. Okay. 
I like using oils for moisturizing. I will tell you what, man, that is soaking in almost like right away. If, I don't know if you can see, this hand here is shinier, glossier than this hand. Like almost immediately. Someone had told me that jojoba actually is very similar to the, the oils that our skin produces. So it's very skin and hair friendly. That's tried and true, man. Um, I love jojoba oil, love it. And then, this is my new, my new secret weapon. I started seeing some hair care companies have conditioners. They would say, now with marula oil. Now marula oil, what the heck is marula oil? Let me spell it. M A R U L A, marula oil. It's, it's African. I bought one ounce of it. And, and when you buy oils, make sure you're not getting a blend. Seriously, you will, like, if you go into like places like Marshalls and TJ Maxx, you see these things on the shelf, like an argan oil, hair conditioner, and all these different, and then you look at the ingredients, and like that's the last thing that's in the ingredients, or it's in there with 20 other things. I like pure oils. Marula oil, this is uh, one ounce. I get the oils on eBay. Now I'm gonna put this on an area that doesn't have any oil on it. Wow. <laughs> I have two words to describe marula oil. I put it on this morning. I put a little bit of wax in. This is bearded, I think it's bearded bastard mustache wax. No other product but beeswax and some oils. But on the beard, marula oil. I will tell you, it's smooth. There's nothing greasy about it. I could use the um, uh, my tablet or my smartphone without leaving fingerprints on it because it soaks in quickly. If I took uh, a paper towel or some type of like uh, even like toilet tissue and blot my beard, there's times where I would end up with like a grease on the paper with certain oils. Definitely coconut oil. Definitely. Uh, vegetable oils, definitely safflower oil, definitely uh, olive oil would leave like a greasy mark. And the colder weather that you're in, the heavier the oil could be because it helps control things. Right now it's gonna get to be almost 90 degrees. Last week it was up in the 90s. And you want a light oil. And I found that the less oil or the lighter the oil that is that's on my beard, on a hot summer day, the cooler I feel. If I put a heavy oil on and I massage it all the way to the skin, I find that when my pores are clogged and when the oil reaches the skin, I find that I'm hotter, sweatier, because this is my first summer with a big monstrous beard. And I will tell you, I don't notice a difference. It is not hot at all. Let me repeat that to you. Big beards are not hotter. They're cooler because of evaporative cooling. So you use a lighter oil. Marula oil. Lighter. I love it. As a matter of fact, that's what's in there right now. I use the, the, the two finger test and I, the comb just flies right through my beard. So if you want to make your own oils, and I, I encourage you to buy every oil from the big brands. Buy Beard Brand, get Beard Baron, get Mad Viking, get the Honest Amish, get, uh, if I'm forgetting any, any of you guys that, that make oils, Best Beard Brand. Try everything. I have a bin with every oil in it that you can imagine. Uh, can you handle bar? Everything, and cross train your beard because what's gonna happen is, it's almost like when you're working out, if you're just doing bench presses all the time, you're gonna plateau. With your, with your chest. So you gotta start doing flies and the cable pulls and things like that. So in the same way, if you keep using the same product on your beard, um, your beard kinda gets bored. I hate to say that, but it gets bored. So cross train it with different products. I think that's gonna help. I think you should switch up products every week. 
I think you should have minimum 20 to 30 different types of oil, uh, different oil brands or different types of oils that you can use on your beard at any given time. Also, uh, let your beard go unplugged one day a week. I remember, I don't know, a couple months ago, I went a whole week without putting anything on it. And it was kind of interesting to see just what a completely natural flyaway beard looks like. All right. Right here, this is a shaving, <laughs> shaving mannequin. When I teach people how to straight razor shave, these are the official authorized strokes. It's a male mannequin hair uh, for uh, haircuts, and I usually, you know, I converted it to a uh, shaving mannequin. These usually last about six haircuts. This one here is a bearded one, and it's the beard was down here. It was like my beard, and this hair, I mean, it just looked like it was crazy. All the hair went all the way down to here, head hair and beard hair, and I trimmed them up. And I gave him a haircut. This, I think this is the third haircut that I've given this guy, and I create a lot of my own natural styles. So a lot of times it's better to experiment on a mannequin head than with people, but I like this. It's tapered in the back. It's, uh, it's long enough to go backwards, and on one side it's kind of an undercut slightly disconnected. And then after about six haircuts, you end up with, you know, you just end up buzzing the mannequin head down and then you end up with something like this and that, and there, that's Walter from uh, Breaking Bad. So you just end up buzzing it off at the very, and then you just use it for whatever you want. You can scare people with it, put it in the closet, you know, so when your wife opens up the closet, there's a head right there. Uh, only kidding, don't do that. Uh, but I rarely throw away these heads. I have a, uh, a laundry basket filled with like bald mannequin heads. It's, it's bizarre. But it, they all have taught me many, many things. I even have this here for I'm experimenting with some, uh, experimenting with some new hairstyles for women and some new techniques. And I would rather do it on a mannequin head than do it on a, a real woman who's gonna give me $125 for a haircut. So it's better to practice on this than to practice on people. All right, so there you go. You have, um, you have marula oil. You have prakashi. Prakashi oil. Can you see that? You have Jojoba oil. It's that that J is pronounced with an H sound, so you would call it jojoba, not jojoba. Jojoba, prakashi, and you'll see prakashi. I found this out. Um, I will. I'm usually very good at pronouncing things, but usually you're going to see it. Um, You're going to see it spelled like that, with an X, and apparently that is a, that is a uh, like an SH sound. I originally started calling it Prakaxi, <laughs> and uh, I apologize to my uh, Brazilian and Portuguese speaking friends because uh, when I found out it was called Prakashi, then uh, I made the proper adjustment. So, but you'll see it spelled like that, but it is all, but it's pronounced like this, Prakashi. Marula oil from Africa, Prakashi oil from a rainforest, Jojoba um, is from any desert area, um, the Southwest, uh, Africa, Middle East, it's wonderful. Those are three oils, you can mix them. I've yet to, I've actually blended the Jojoba before with grapeseed oil and some essential oils for uh, fragrance. Well, that's it, if you have any questions, please, uh, leave them below. I'm getting more and more questions. Literally, I'm spending an hour a day returning emails. And I, I guess I'm, one of these days I might go full time <laughs> doing this with YouTube. I'm not sure. I'm trying to be a, a YouTube content creator. Uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, forward it to people who you think would benefit from it. And uh, maybe I will see you at the National Beard and Mustache Championship in Nashville this year on September 3rd. 
there's a possibility that I might be there. Would you be interested in meeting if I went there? I would love to see my fan base and my guys down there. So, uh, George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver, on Instagram, at George A. Bruno, on Periscope, and Twitter, at George Bruno. Follow me on LinkedIn if you're interested in doing business with me, whether that be media work, if there's anything I can do for you on camera, or as far as media is concerned with voiceover and so forth. Uh, I don't mind uh, connecting with people on LinkedIn. It is strictly business. On Facebook, I have a business page, not my personal page. My business page is George Bruno Luxury Hair Experience. My website is georgebruno.com and my YouTube channel, as you know, is Gray Bailey. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it.